Well, uh, you know, when it comes to Christmas, one of the things that I've always found interesting is the way different, different movies uh, portray Christmas. Christmas is often portrayed in, the, in movies as this magical time of year when, when anything can happen. For example, the Grinch grows a bigger heart. Rudolph lights the way for Santa. Kevin McAllister fights off burglars when he's left home all alone. And a man named George Bailey meets an angel named Clarence in his greatest moment of need. Now the truth is, as, as Christians, we do believe in the supernatural, things that are out of the realm of the normal. Because we believe in a creator. We believe in a creator who made us in his image. We believe our, made, our world was made perfect, but that it was people, it was us. It was God's creation who disappointed him, uh, disobeyed him, bringing upon our race the curse of sin and death. Our disobedience and God's faithfulness was seen over and over again uh, throughout history. We can read in the scripture of how God made covenants with man. Covenants which he kept faithfully and human beings constantly broke. We can think of the covenant God made with Noah and the covenant God made with Abraham. And then he made a covenant with the, the nation of Israel that they would be his people and he would be their God. He rescued them from slavery in Egypt and gave them a leader. He appeared to them in miraculous ways. He spoke to them and gave them commandments to live by. And the Bible tells the story of how no matter how hard they tried, the people God created couldn't save themselves. So God came to our rescue. God Almighty humbled himself entered our world in the way in the usual way that we enter the world as a baby it was a supernatural event that took place over 2,000 years ago in a manger in Bethlehem God became flesh and blood and dwelt among us and this is the thing you know God could have just snapped his fingers and taken the form of a grown man he could have just snapped his fingers and, and appeared on the doorstep of a Pharisee or a merchant or a governor. If Jesus had chosen, he could have been born and adopted into uh, Caesar's family, similar to how Moses was adopted into Pharaoh's family. God could have done that if he had chosen. But God chose to be born as a humble child to a humble young woman from Nazareth. Years later, there was, there was a saying, surely nothing good could come from Nazareth. That's who Jesus chose to be born to. He chose Mary, this young girl from Nazareth, to be his doorway into our fallen world. In today's scripture, God sends a messenger to announce his arrival to Mary. So if you have your Bible, you can look with me, and we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you would have given him the name Jesus. He 
he will be great, and he, be, he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. I love this. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. May it be to may it be to me as you've said it. Perhaps the most profound thing that we know Mary ever said was, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. Mary found herself confronted with this amazing event. And she simply surrendered. She understood who she was. She was the Lord's servant. And she surrendered to him. The real power of the Christmas story can be, can be summed up in one word, Emmanuel. It simply means God is with us. He works in us and through us by his grace and our response to him. Verse 35 really is, is one of the keys for us today. It says, uh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, it's, it's interesting that Jesus' birth sounds a, a whole lot like, uh, like when his followers are reborn. We think about it. A person who begins a relationship with Jesus, they are reborn. The Holy Spirit, when they are reborn, the Holy Spirit falls upon them. They are infilled with His Spirit, and it remakes them so that they are made holy and are called a child of God. About this, this passage, N.T. Wright put it this way, Mary is the supreme example of what happens when God is at work through human beings, God's power from the outside and the indwelling spirit within together result in things being done that would otherwise be unthinkable. That power that worked through a young woman from Nazareth is available to you and I. It's that power that transforms us when we surrender our lives to Christ when we accept him as our Lord. When we accept Jesus as our Lord, we use that phrase born again to refer to the experience. And it's that same power of God that was at work in Mary's life by which we are reborn. As we consider this story, remember a few things. Number one, remember that God loved Mary. The angel told her, you are highly favored. Even though she was going to go through some very difficult things. The angel didn't say your life would be easy. He told Mary that her life, that she was highly favored, but he didn't say it would be easy. She was going to go through some very difficult things. God recognized that the, something special about Mary. God knew of Mary's faith and, and, that she, and her obedience. And God was going to use her in his plan to save the world. It says the, the Holy Spirit fell upon Mary. 
the powerful grace of God overshadowed her. And in this sense, she sort of became the new Eve. Just as sin had entered the world back in Genesis through Eve, now sin's remedy was entering the world through Mary. This child that, that Mary would give birth to would do what we could not, save us from our sin. It's God's grace, His grace, that reaches out to us. Mary didn't go to God and, and, and say, I want to do something special. God came to Mary. God's grace reached out to Mary, and God's grace reaches out to us just the same way. God even sends messengers to us. Maybe not Gabriel. Maybe not literal angels. Although it's possible. But God sends messengers to us in the form of family and friends, and sometimes even unaware strangers. God speaks to us through music and the situations that come up in our life. The truth is God can choose anything he wants to to be a means of grace, something by which he speaks to us. God speaks and we respond. He never forces himself upon us, but he gives us the freedom to, to receive his mercy and grace or to reject it. Because that's what love is. If God forced us to all fall in line and just be obedient every step of the way and we were forced to to do whatever he wanted we wouldn't love him and scripture says god is love and he desires for us to love him because he loves us and that can't be forced because love is never forced it can't be forced it wouldn't be love when we put our faith in christ we belong to him. It's love because we could try to do it our own way. But when we recognize who he is, recognize how he loves us, when we put our faith in him, we belong to him and he is with us. And in, in, that, in, in that, we have the knowledge that we will never be alone. Now, Mary had a scary road ahead of her, but her response was, I am the Lord's servant. I'm not sure when Mary said that, she really fully understood the, the implications of what her life was going to be like. I don't think she needed to know. She simply recognized that God was asking something of her, and she responded saying, I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you say. Is that our response to the Lord? That kind of obedience and trust and faith? They say that, that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how we, how we react to it. And I, and I know I've seen that, there's a lot of truth there. I've seen that played out over and over again. When we react to life, by faithful obedience to Christ, we will find that God gives us the strength to go through life's challenges. For Mary, the angel said, do not be afraid. This didn't mean that Mary had nothing to be afraid of. The truth is she had many things to be fearful, fearful of. But it meant that God would be with her through whatever came next. Mary's hardships were, were real. She would face some very real hardships. What were some of the things Mary had to be afraid of? Well, she was a young woman who was given a great responsibility, who lived in a very uh, patriarchal, male-dominated world. Mary was betrothed to a man named Joseph. His first reaction she had to know would be 
to think she was unfaithful to him. She had to at least consider that, you know, a, a man could have, uh, that she could be stoned for her unfaithfulness. She could be killed for adultery. She had to know it was possible. And in fact, the, in Matthew, I think it is, it, it mentions that Joseph considered quietly divorcing her. It had to cross Mary's mind that in that day and in that age, in that society, Joseph divorced her for unfaithfulness, people would know. And then who would want to marry her? Who would want, who would take care of her? If she told people this story of how she was, an angel had come to her and told her she would bear the Son of God, they might think she was crazy. Did she wonder how this this situation she was in might affect her parents, her family. Mary faced some difficult things, some things she really could have worried about. And yet her response right away was, I'm the Lord's servant. May it be as you've said. And you know, the truth is, as Mary grew up and in or as she gave birth and became a mom and, and went on with her life, Mary's life didn't get easier later. Things wouldn't necessarily be easier in her future. In the short-term future, she was going to have to make this trip to Bethlehem. She was going to get there and find that there was no room for her in the inn, so she would give birth in a, in a manger. We can infer from Scripture. Sadly, once we get past the birth of Jesus and uh, his eventually his visit to the to the temple and a couple of there's just a couple of stories in which Joseph is is even a part of. And from that we can infer that Mary probably lost her husband fairly early in her life or in her marriage. Mary was, was going to live to see the death of her child. This newborn son that she was about to give birth to, she was going to see, going to see die. Really difficult things happened to Mary too. We're living in a, we are living in a time of anger and suffering and fear and loneliness, and just like Mary, our struggles are real too. Our sorrow, our sorrow is real. If you're hurting, your suffering is real. Your fear and anger may come from very legitimate places, but you are not alone any more than Mary was alone. You are highly favored. God is with you, and his love for you is real. His spirit still falls on, on those who are faithful to him. God is at work in the lives of those who put their faith in him. As for Mary, Mary was blessed. She was very blessed. The Holy Spirit will fall on you, the angel said, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And Emmanuel. God was with her. And despite all of Mary's hardships, she experienced many blessings in life as well. This amazing circumstance in which uh, God miraculously giving her a child. Joseph, now Joseph uh, was visited by an angel as well, but that didn't mean Joseph had to listen to that angel. It didn't mean Joseph couldn't divorce her. It didn't mean that Joseph couldn't have her uh, stoned. And I'd like to infer from, from what we know Joseph did that he must have really cared about Mary. 
And so despite Mary's hardship, she experienced a husband who cared about her. A husband who, who was married to her and helped her raise her child. That's a blessing that Mary experienced. You know what other blessing Mary experienced? She, ex she experienced the joy of being a mom. I'm not sure I can sp I can't speak from that on a personal level, but I do know enough to know this. I'm pretty sure childbirth is very painful. And yet that typically moms feel a great sense of joy when that child has arrived. There is joy in being a mom, and Mary got to experience that too. There were times when it was difficult, but there was times of great joy. Mary was raising the Son of God. It was her son. And she had to have experienced a mother's pride in the things her son would do. Remember the story of the, the wedding at Cana? Jesus was, was all grown up, and they were at this wedding, and they ran out of wine. And Mary goes to her son and wants him to solve the problem. And even though it seems like he, he doesn't feel he really should, he does because his mom asked him to. And he turns the water into wine. And I read that story and I know that it just is so clear. Mary knew who her son was and she was proud of who her son was. 33-ish years after the birth of Jesus in that manger, 33-ish years after the, that first Christmas, Mary experienced the heartbreak of the cross. But as she experienced the heartbreak of the cross, three days later she experienced the joy of the resurrection. Mary would experience tragedy, and Mary would experience joy. And through it all and in between, God was with her. She was not alone. Life in this fallen world is, is full of good things. And it's full of bad things. And the really amazing part is, despite sin's effect on our world, the bad things don't have to spoil the good things. And we never have to face the bad things on our own. And we never have to celebrate the good things on our own. Jesus is with us. Don't ever mistake life's struggles for God's anger or not caring. God's grace is vast, his love is eternal, and it is infinite. The story of Christmas, the, the story of Christmas is one of the Holy Spirit falling on people who are in need of help and God giving them the power to do what they needed to do. Christmas isn't about, it's not about gifts, it's not about lights, it's not even about gathering with our family. Christmas is about God's love for each and every one of us. This Christmas, remember God's example of love that we find in the story of Mary. Mary loved God, and she was faithful, and she was obedient. She was his servant. And God loved Mary. Mary was chosen and privileged and blessed. And God loves you too. God loves you so much that he gave up his throne in heaven and became flesh and blood and dwelt among us so that he might grow up in this world as we do and lay down his life on the cross for our sins. God loves you and I. We are the reason why Christmas exists. We are the reason why God became flesh and blood and dwelt among us. You and I are highly favored. 
as Jesus would say, for, good, for God so loved the world, and that includes you, that he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever would believe in him, their sin would be overshadowed by the cross of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit would fall upon them and they would be called children of God. That's salvation in a nutshell. The power of the Holy Spirit falls upon us. We are overshadowed by the cross and we become children of God. This Christmas, seek Jesus, follow him, and know that whatever's going on around you, he is with you. Let's sing one last song as we close this morning. Lord God, we celebrate this time of year because we celebrate that our King has been born, that we have been highly favored. Your Holy Spirit has fallen upon us, we have been overshadowed by your cross, your sacrifice, and we have become children of God because of your love for us. We give you praise, we give you thanksgiving, and we ask that you would continue your work in our hearts so that your love might overflow out of us, and we will give you praise. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Merry Christmas, and God bless you, and enjoy your afternoon. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Sometimes it's the New Year, honey, but Christmas.